after the long holiday weekend. Hi, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here with Weather for Weather Geeks. Hope you had a great holiday weekend. The weather actually was pretty decent for a lot of the, the weekend. We had some rain here and there, uh, particularly as we got into the final stages of the weekend on Sunday. And uh, today we even had a couple of rainbows mixed in with some of the raindrops. And overall, just kind of, a, despite the occasional rainbow this afternoon, it was kind of a, a gloomy day. Overall, kind of looked and felt like a Monday. A lot of us headed back to work and school today with temperatures basically not moving and occasionally a little bit of drizzle and mist and even a couple of legitimate downpours here and there, midday hours especially. And uh, again, sun tried to peek out and produce a couple of rainbows at times this afternoon. Boy, it's been just a topsy-turvy month, hasn't it? Uh, 43 was our high today, but we were above average from Tuesday through Sunday in terms of daily high temperatures, and that was a pattern change after the very chilly weather during the middle of the month. We were below average for a week straight from the 30th through the 20th. And then before that, of course, it was much warmer than the average during the first 12 days of November. So it's been a real back and forth kind of a month. Uh, December might hold some interesting things temperature-wise as well. And we'll talk about the longer range forecast in, in just a moment. Did you see this this morning? Uh, uh, Mauna Loa on the uh, Big Island of Hawaii. This is actually the world's largest volcano and it's been fairly inactive for decades now it's been really since 1984 since there's been a legitimate eruption and uh there was one this morning and it was caught on the infrared satellite picture of the uh, region so uh you know this is something that has been threatening to kind of gurgle and belch and erupt in recent years and finally uh, we had a legit eruption on the big island early this morning back here across the lower 48 states the weather pretty quiet this evening but there is a gathering area of low pressure out across the high plains. This will come eastward, and actually this is kind of a more of a springtime setup as we go into tomorrow with uh, deep, deepening low, Gulf moisture getting involved in a pretty good severe weather setup tomorrow with a level four moderate risk, four and a one to five scale, uh, of severe weather from uh, Memphis down into parts of Mississippi, extreme northeast Louisiana, and southeastern Arkansas as well. And actually the risk extends out away from that bullseye as far north as Oh, southern parts of Kentucky and as far south as the Gulf Coast. So this will be a uh, pretty raucous second half of the day tomorrow, even into tomorrow night. Some heavy, gusty storms will be a possibility for our friends and neighbors to the south. Now, that same system will not bring us severe weather, but it will bring us some wind and some rain as we go into tomorrow night. Tomorrow, an uneventful ho-hum Tuesday, kind of like today, just kind of cloudy and, again, just uneventful. Pretty mild, though, for the end of November. Despite the clouds, we'll still have no trouble getting into the upper 40s to around 50 tomorrow afternoon. Then the showers push in tomorrow night and we'll get off to a windy, wet, and mild start to the day on Wednesday. First half of the day, we'll be up in the 50s. Uh, it'll be windy. Showers most likely before about 11 a.m. The wind will continue to be an issue in the afternoon, but it'll be much colder. That wind in the afternoon will drop from the 50s down into the 30s by the end of the afternoon Wednesday. Might be a couple of lake effect snow showers and flurries, especially well north of I-80, then Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So this is probably not, you know, high wind warning Kind of a kind of a situation, but maybe a wind advisory for parts of the region for uh, Wednesday morning and midday in particular. Locally, a gust of 30, 35, maybe even 40. I think the the higher chance of a 40 mile per hour gust will be up closer to I ninety from Toledo to Cleveland to Ashtabula to Erie. But yeah, no matter which way you slice it, just a blustery day with falling temperatures Wednesday. The wind will still be kind of an issue into the day on Thursday. A lot of us had about three quarters of an inch worth of rain at the end of the holiday weekend. Uh, the next rainmaker tomorrow night into Wednesday will not bring as much rain, but a quarter to a half an inch of rain does seem pretty likely. Again, the majority of this falling between about 3 a.m. and about 11 a.m. on Wednesday. Now, beyond that, you know, the roller coaster ride kind of continues. Now, we, falling temperatures on Wednesday will end up in the in the 30s by the end of the day. The first day of December on Thursday, noticeably colder, only about 34, more like the end of December rather than the start of December. But then look what happens at the end of the week. Some uh, afternoon sun and 48 on Friday. The clouds build back in by Friday night. Kind of a similar system on Saturday into Saturday night as we'll have tomorrow night into Wednesday. Pretty strong cold front. We'll rush through some gusty winds, some showers Saturday, particularly in the morning. Temperatures might end up falling Saturday afternoon, setting the stage for a uh, big cool down for the second half of the upcoming weekend. All right, uh, if you watch my annual winter forecast, it's been a couple of weeks now. Uh, one of the key... Uh, things we talked about, kind of the key tenants of our of our winter forecast is this middle item. December, much colder than last year, and it's on the table that December will be one of the coldest ones we've had in recent memory. Dating back to 2011, 
Uh, we've had some very balmy Decembers. In fact, since 2011, four of the 11 warmest Decembers on record have occurred just since 2011, including 2011, 2012, 2015, and last year, 2021, a very mild December. Last year, we've only had three cooler than average Decembers since 2011, uh, including uh, a pretty, pretty cold one back in 2017, five years ago. Now, the pattern is looking mighty interesting as we go into the month of December this year. We've got a Mondo, what we call a blocking pattern, which will set up across the Northern Atlantic as we go into the first half of the month. Now, this ridge actually will originate over towards Scandinavia and then kind of retrograde or move westward and center itself over Greenland. Uh, these deep reds, very anomalous um, ridging of high pressure up in the Northern Atlantic. This is what we call a blocking pattern or a uh, negative North Atlantic oscillation. And it's on the table that this will be the strongest uh, Greenland block or negative North Atlantic oscillation that we've seen in the winter season since December of 2010. Again, if you watched our winter forecast, we were worried about 2010, 2011, which was a harsh winter around here, being a pretty good analog for this upcoming winter. Not to say we're gonna see an exact repeat. Uh, history does not tend to repeat itself exactly, but the flavor of this winter could very well resemble that uh, pretty tough winter of 2010, 2011. That December in 2010, we had 50 plus inches worth of snow at the airport. The winter of 2010, 2011 ended up being four degrees colder than the average. It's a pretty big number for the winter season. Uh, again, not expecting or, or necessarily uh, predicting uh, an exact duplicate this winter, but this strong ridging is very reminiscent of early winter in 2010, 2011, and means that we could very well see a pretty cold and stormy, I think especially second half of December. Now the cold will not be here right off the bat in December. The first week or so will not be particularly cold. But with this kind of pattern, it's only a matter of time before cold chunks start getting delivered down into the south, uh, uh, southern part of Canada, I should say, and into the uh, lower 48 states. And again, if the moisture meets up with some of this colder air, uh, we might be dealing with some snow in the, uh, in, the, in the last couple of weeks before Christmas. I don't see a lot of snow occurring through about December 7th, maybe through the 10th. But beyond that, I think a lot of wintry mischief is on the table. And we're going to have a lot more to say about December in upcoming editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. In the meantime, thank you for watching tonight. I'll see you back here on Tuesday evening.